Hello. Welcome, everybody. It's that time again. The, it it seems so short now. Like, I remember before it was like, oh, my God, what, it's like such a long time since last time we played. And I'm like, yeah, we were just playing like yesterday. <laughs> Flying by now. I love it. I'm really yeah. excited. I'm really excited for this session. I want I want to cause chaos. When you sent me my new character sheet, I was just like, oh, yes. The <laughs> abilities that I will spend all of my points on. Um, you're just gonna, you're just gonna like drop this two XP, uh, twelve XP into like putting two points in rack, right? Just yeah. Just rack. Just, I just want to destroy stuff. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about it and how like when I started, Cantor was kind of this like you know up and coming like gangster dude, and I kind of had some ideas for him and stuff. And now I realize that he's just the dude from fucking Diantward, basically. He's just ninja <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm pretty okay with that. <laughs> anyway. Hi, hi guys. How's everybody hi. doing? doing? Pretty good? good, pretty good. That's good. Um, if if for folks in chat, you've just sort of like wandered in here and like, what the hell is this beautiful overlay for? Uh, we're playing Blades in the Dark, uh, which is uh, this is episode. This is our fifth game. It originally just started as a one-off, but we were like, no, we need more crime. <laughs> and uh, yeah. This is this is the action. Um, do you want to give us the the quick rundown on the game, John, before we get started? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so this is this is my game. Uh, it was kickstarted this year and is closing in on being released to the general population. Um, it's about criminals in a fantasy city pulling crimes and and trying to rise up the ladder of of criminal groups. Um, it's heavily influenced by uh, the game, video game Dishonored and, and uh, Thief, the, the Dark Project in that, that series. Um, so if you know anything about those games, you kind of have the right vibe. There's there's a little bit of magic and ghost stuff and then fantasy, thiefy, criminal action. Uh, and this particular group uh, is kind of drug dealers, um, although they've decided to take it into the turning demon blood into cool tattoos sort of direction. I mean, <laughs> so. I'm, still, I'm still a drug dealer. I don't know about you psychos. Yeah, there's no kind of <laughs> about it. <laughs> I mean, it's okay, so we, we multi-classed fairly early on. We're like yeah. drug dealer, weird yeah. demon blood tattoo purveyors. Murder hobos. I mean, we, we, we did say we'd sign up for, you know, whatever jobs we're going to make the cash. So. Don't, even, don't even bring that murder hobo shit on me. I got a house. I live places. <laughs> you. Fair enough. I think you crashed <laughs> someone else's house, but it's, it's you live places. I contribute. It's more a co-op. It's fine. <laughs> uh, spoilers, if you haven't watched the other episodes, um, basically they have uh, taken away a little piece. They started by taking away a little piece of turf from another gang called the Red Sashes because the Red Sashes are in a gang war with this other gang and while their while their backs were turned, our our starting crew jumped in, stole their tattoo parlor away from them. That's like some dudes. So yeah, it's straight um, up the best time to get at somebody when they have their backs turned. Exactly, and yeah. then followed up by like taking over the next block, basically, of this brothel and and gambling hall. Uh, and they were they were sitting pretty. They moved up the, a tier and got some more gang members on board and. Then the red sashes last time hit him back, and we had a big fight, and people yeah. died. Uh, crazy, crazy magical stuff happened. Um, yeah, we pl we played like the the dark people getting cut down in the street game, and then we also played the like crazy Wuxia awesome anime spirit essence game, and like the, <laughs> we could like neither of the twain should be like we did not know that that game was existing at the same time, which is all our characters did not know. It's pretty pretty badass. Yeah, it was sweet. I uh, I like the observation we made at the end of the last one, where it was kind of like Oscar is sort of playing his own game, and we don't like <laughs> we're like cool, good, pat pat pat, go do your scary stuff. It's working out good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we had a uh, bit of a power struggle, kind of, between Sean's character RC and um, Adam's character Cantor about. Yeah, that's right. About what how wrong we... RC is about everything all the fucking time. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that. Um, yeah, we got to see just how 
unreasonable canter can be mm -hmm. um and and, and kind of split the gang a little bit and, as people were going out the party post post battle uh some I can't, of them went so with how did that how did that i can't help remember so my my instinct is to remember that I won that argument, but I don't know if I actually like. How did that go? No. Oh yeah, right. Because uh, you, you were like, you, you both rolled middling, and yeah. uh, you ended up no, going Sean, with the game. Sean rolled a six. Oh oh. Sean, yeah, Sean rolled a six, and uh, um, Adam got a five. So he RC definitely like won the, the the argument, but some of the gang stayed behind with and was like, no, can't be cool. Like, why are you trying to? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Out? And I, I actually, I was, at the time, I don't know why I was using fifths. I was like, yeah, like three fifths of them go with you. Or I don't know why I was saying that was dumb. But basically you had 10 guys. So like four of them went with Cantor and six of them went with RC is sort of how it fell out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Word. yeah, so that, that's, that's where we sort of cut it was, and Oscar kind of threw his support in with, with RC. Uh, and then uh, uh, going out to celebrate who drew the curtain and that was that was where we left it yeah, yeah that's right i remember that now but yeah mommy and daddy were fighting and uh people got caught in the middle <laughs> a little bit yeah Mo mommy and like mommy's weird friend <laughs> um yeah okay well i think Cantor probably remembers winning that argument so probably that's how yeah, he's I... gonna that's how he's gonna remember it, that happened yeah uh rc doesn't particularly remember winning that argument uh, herself as she wanted Winning that argument was everyone leaves Canada stew by himself. So right. it's interesting that despite the the dice results, uh, uh, they they each have different perceptions of what what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Just yes. like reality, there isn't any one. We're gonna go all rasham on this episode and be like, "Cool, three different things that we remember different ways." <laughs> yeah, that's Great right. Film. The Rashomon party. Um, mm -hmm. Cool. Cool, cool. I want to spend some of this experience that I seem to yeah, have. Yeah, so the first thing we should probably do is, if anyone who's been following along at home, um, Adam's character was created as a character class called the Lurk, um, kind of the typical Garrett thief guy. Yeah. And then as we started playing, it was became obvious that Cantor isn't that guy. That's just not who he really is. So there's a mechanism in the game, uh, which which we haven't really had a chance to see yet, where you can you can either change your playbook completely to a different character class, or you can sort of hybridize, um, just swapping out a certain component of the character. There's a few different ways to do it. Uh, for tonight, I kind of migrated uh, Cantor over to another character class called the Hound, which is a little more of a shooter, hunter, kind of like prowling the streets, hunting, shooting type of dude, which is a little more like Cantor, I think. Yeah. Um, and and also brought in brought in his Lurk stuff that he had already gotten. Uh, so he's kind of keeping who he was already and then sort of changing into this different this different character class. But in doing that, uh, I, Adam ended up with kind of 12 experience points kind of sitting around waiting to be assigned. <laughs> so we're going to do that on on camera here at the beginning mm -hmm. of the figure out figure out what he's getting what he's buying with his money cool character money um all right so i got 12 ticks so i place those in what fashion how do i do that walk me through yeah this. so uh we've been a little like all over the place because the exactly how you do ticks has changed a couple times while we've been playing yeah uh, so there there's a a little bit like more straightforward mechanism for that but because we're transferring your character i think it's fair for you to just spin them how you want right now um and and put the ticks where you want so if you put five of them into an attribute then you can go ahead and get a dot in something and if you put eight of them into your playbook then you can get a new special ability um, if you want to divvy them out into partial things, you could, but okay. you've got, so you've got basically enough for two dots of stuff or a new special ability and almost another dot. Um, okay. Uh, I'm pretty low on dots, but 
I just don't feel inspired dots wise since you took my murder away from me. Um, <laughs> I mean, wreck, wreck, dots. wreck is cool, but um, I mean, I can get <laughs> dice elsewhere, right? I can be desperate and do devil's bargains and shit. That's been working out great for me so far. Um, totally, yeah. Who needs who needs dots? Yeah, fuck dots, man. Um, okay, well, I'll take I'll take vengeful. Mm-hmm. Four dots. I thought, I thought you were gonna. Dots. I'll take vengeful, and then I'll take uh, four fifths of uh, prowess <laughs> dot. I guess. I think it's four six. Is it, oh, yeah, At six. least on my sheet. Oh yeah, sorry. It's yeah, you got more. the you got the nerf sheet, uh, Sean. Uh, mine all advance every two ticks. It's crazy. I don't know how this happened. <laughs> nice. Okay, I got so... six dots and. All right. Yeah, totally. I'm a sixth generation. I got all the fucking disciplines. You don't even know, man. All right. So yeah, I'll take I'll take vengeful and then most of a prowess uh, dot, which I'll try to finish off today. So John, so we know for this session when we're t- marking XP, as we mark it, should we be marking it in the respective places? Like, oh, I just did, uh, I just made a desperate action. I put it and you stick it somewhere, or do we have them? Like, do we pull them? Yeah. Um, now the only the only kind of restriction, I guess, is when you do a desperate action, you either put it in the attribute that you're using. For that action, uh-huh. whatever government the thing you're doing, or or you or you put it in your playbook. So it's not it's no longer any action at all. It's like if you if you use it, you mark the XP there, or you put it in your playbook. Got um, it. So so we don't because it is still a little bit of that you use it to to raise it kind of mentality. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, so that's that that's the only kind of restriction there. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And another thing I want to try out, a few people on the G Plus community have been playing this way, and um, I think we did, not this group, but I think one of my other Blades groups did at one point, um, and that was to do Pushing Yourself or Devil's Bargains uh, to, to let that happen after the roll. Uh, Ooh, yeah. So, like, would, so you you like, see, yeah, would you like oh, another die kind of thing? Like, we see you've already kind of failed, or, okay. <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, one benefit that it has is it's one less decision to make before the roll, uh, so that can kind of like get things going a little faster. And then if you roll well, then you don't have to worry about that phase of it. And if you roll badly, then you can decide if you want to bring it. Huh. Up. Yeah, sure. the, the only yeah, I, I'd be happy to try it, but I think a lot of times our devil's bargains are not this thing might happen or this thing will happen in the fiction. It's you choose to do this thing. You let your your guys get injured. You you use the the demon blood tattoo ink, and so those things are like built into the action itself. I don't think it'll kill you to like retroactively add them in, but uh, there has been some fun to the devil's bargains that we've played out that have like been part of the action, part of what we did was implicit. I mean, I think there's room for yeah. there's room for either one. We could try it. Yeah, that right, and that and that's why it works the way it, we've been doing it. Um, because doing it before it does it, it kind of makes sense in the flow. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'm not I'm not saying like this is the new rule or something. Like I, I think you can play the game either way. Uh, I just kind of want to try it out. And if if we don't like it, that's fine. But uh, cool. Okay. I have a feeling Strash is just gonna like be taking the Dell's bargains no matter what. It's like, well, I just did all this crazy shit. Oh, that's a Dell's bargain. Nice. Um, sure, I'll roll an extra die. Yeah, awesome. they're typically built into your actions, Strash. So, <laughs> I am a firm believer in uh, magic having a price. I think. So. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think the reason for that is is that for Sean and I, the devil's bargain is what we call a metaphor. <laughs> but for you, <laughs> it's like no, literally, it's the devil, no. man. The devil is bargaining with you. <laughs> She's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. One of my friends has that uptick arrow. <laughs> That's right. Uh, okay, cool. So vengeful. Um, basically, when someone messes with you, you get a bonus die when you hit back. That's basically what it means. So, nice. yeah. Uh, good, good for Cantor. Um, did you actually get hurt in that fight, Adam? Did Cantor take it? Um, let me check my notes. Cantor uh, did I not. I don't think it did. I took a bunch of stress, but not enough to do anything real. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I was very careful of that. I, I rewatched it recently, and uh, both Oscar and, and RC got 
pretty pounded, but uh, can't yep. be hot. Mm -hmm. Which is cool. to say, I am the best at that fight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you suckers you to get beat up for me. It's beautiful. All right, cool. So we are good on character stuff, and we can move on. So I think we are rolling into uh, a little downtime phase here right after the battle and the ensuing day plus. Um, yep. Stuff. Actually, uh, can I can I interject? Yeah, yeah. Um, I I think the next day, like probably after everyone is done with their hangovers and wakes up. Uh, Oscar's gonna call a quick group meeting. Team meeting. Sounds good. And, um, uh, how, I think before you how, early, how early is this meeting? Not that early. He actually That's lets good. you folks sleep in. Nice. So right. it's, it's like a late afternoon morning then. Yeah, it's like, like a brunch thing. Morning, it's like a good brunch thing. I can brunch with the best of um, But be, but that sounds like we're getting into downtime, and I think we should do the. The payoff and the entanglements in the heat. No, those are like the direct reactions. Oh yeah, did we did we wait? We did not do those things last mm. session. No. Yeah, no, I I already I've done them. I haven't I haven't told you about them. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. oh okay. Um, well, I don't know how much rep we get for just <laughs> fucking up some red sashes because yeah, yeah, we're, we're supposed that's to get right. because they're tier two. So I'm just saying I want some gold. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> yes. So uh, yeah, let, let's 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 record that. Um, before we get into other stuff, just just so you can get your get your, get your fun uh, benefits first yeah. before, before new trouble hits you, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Uh, okay. So uh, let me see. Where I'm going to write this down so I don't lose it. All right. Here we go. Um. This isn't to circumvent that that, that group meeting at all. Uh, Josh, yeah, I just yeah. things no, I, we we need this. We also need the coin from this to fuel some downtimes because there's yeah. going to be a lot of actions we're going to have to take before we launch into a job. Yeah. So, uh, you get um, two rep from that fight because your enemies are tier two. Nice. Um, which takes you up to Seven. eight, I believe. Is it we seven? Have, we have five now on the sheet, yeah. No, I thought you had six for some reason. Okay. I mean, uh, sure, yeah, no, that's it's a six. That's what six looks like. Cool. All right. <laughs> did I? We did have I six total. That? We have six total hold because one of our holdings gives us hold. We got but we actually right, that, have five rep and one hold. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. That's that's what I meant. You have six total, but yeah, you have five rep. So now you have seven plus We're one from turf, the, yeah. from the turf. Yeah. Right. So that gives you eight. Uh, and then your vice den has generated two coin over the last, well, it's basically two, two phases, but yeah, one, one per. So plus two coin. Vice den, best investment. <laughs> yeah. The earlier, the better, right? It keeps paying off over time. Yeah. Um, you did not seize a new claim, and you this didn't... Is the, uh, this is the Agricola portion of the role-playing game. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, I always starve my peasants in that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're a dark overlord in that as well. Good. So one thing to, to know uh, is, as it says here on the payoff area, um... Subtract one coin per crew tier if you pay a tithe to a ward boss or a larger organization. So technically now that you're tier one, if you want to be under Lissa's and the Crow's uh, protection in, 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 the, in, the, in the area, um, in the district, you owe her one of one coin paid up the chain to her, which no one is currently really doing because the gang war is happening and everything is all fucked up right now. So you could just hang on to it and be like, eh, things are crazy, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but, but you know as, as criminals in Duskwall, like, this is the system. Like, and that, you know, that, that relationship when, you're, when you have it upkept and everything, you may have noticed on your faction sheet, I don't know if you looked, but you're standing with the crows has gone down. Um, not to hostile, but just to unfriendly. 
And yeah, I also noticed yeah. that our studio with the red sashes has gotten pretty, uh, pretty visible there as well. I can't, I think, like, RC sent a very clear message of peace back with that broke with that broken guy last time. I, I don't these red, understand. These red sashes are such a bunch of babies. They should be called the white <laughs> diapers. Like, I'm so sick of them, and they're whining. Like, come on. Oh, how much, how much gold total do we need before we can try to la launch up into Tier 2? Uh, 12, I believe. Good to know. Yeah. Man. Yeah. We also need to, like, have a, another gang, Red Sashes, that we can, like, supplant that are weakened. Yeah, should we not then accept... That's part of what I wanted to talk about at the group meeting. But yeah, because yeah. I feel like we should just accept these three negative... De and be like, look, you can be a bunch of babies and we're just going to get rid of you. Anybody who wants to be in a real gang, come on over here. <laughs> I think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, right, and then heat. So here, here's, here's the thing. Uh, that last situation generated six heat. Oh, goodness. Um, yeah, kind of a lot. Uh, was, it, was it all the murders? Just asking. The murders well, definitely played a role. Yeah. It was self-defense. Uh, it was plus two <laughs> it's like manslaughter at worst. Yeah. There's no, it just, it just says if killing was involved, that's all the rule says. It doesn't uh, specify. This is yeah, guy yeah. who wrote Except the you rules. Keep rewriting these rules. So yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll buy that. <laughs> that's what it says. Um, now, what I couldn't find out by, by watch, I went back and looked at the videos and I couldn't d definitively say if you were at zero heat at the beginning of last session or if you had two. And it so, really mattered because... <laughs> yeah, so I got us down to zero heat from the, the session before we took, because those last two sessions, we just chained right into each other. So before right. we took the vice stand, we had two heat, and I went and messed with the blue coats and told them yes. to stay on our turf. And that right. was specifically my beef with with Cantor or Arcee's beef with Cantor was that he just shot a dude in that again in the fir in that first uh, in, in episode three where we took the um, where we took the vice stand. Uh, so right. at the beginning of episode three, we had zero heat. But then we didn't do a payoff and heat from episode three because we just rolled right that, into yeah, yeah. stabbing so, in the face. That, so. What it seems to me, what happened was you, redu you reduced it to zero. You took the vice in, which that was a two heat operation. Yeah. And then immediately the counterattack happened and you fought them and it was a six heat event. That, that's the way I'm currently reading it. That sounds um, legitimate to me. Okay. I, I just want to make sure because... It means that you're gonna. You that means your heat fills, and you take your first wanted level. Uh, for yeah. The, cool. That means our heat clears. We don't have to worry about getting rid of heat now. That means your heat clears exactly. So you uh, have I would say that, stars on your Grand Theft Auto meter now. Mm -hmm. Less less uh, uh, agreeable players that didn't want to be like uh, that didn't want to be uh, uh, wanted. I don't know why you wouldn't. Might want to like <laughs> act and say like, hey. If you're going to give us heat from a session, then also give us the opportunity to reduce it. Because essentially, we're going to heat, and then immediately it was like red face and red sashes in our face, and then more heat. Uh, I am all a fan of us being wanted. So that sounds. I great. would just like John to not cheat, and that's yeah. Well, I thought we I know want, exactly. But, yeah, we all want things we can't have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair. That's fair. It's fine. Um, the, the good news is there is there is a, a mechanic uh, for reducing your wanted level, uh, which has to do with be going to prison and stuff. Um, oh, nice. Prison so, game. This is new. Yeah, it, it is. Strauss hasn't seen this yet, but... Um, Exciting. Oh, I totally want to play the prison game. Awesome. Basically, oh. you can you can drop your wanted level by one by uh, being caught and incarcerated or, or taking the fall for the crew. Um, and the severity of the sentence depends on where your wanted level is when you when that happens. So, nice. if 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 one of you got nabbed right now, it would be for a wanted level one sentence. So you go away for a few months or something. Um, and if you wait until it's all the way filled up and you do it, then someone's got to go down for a big crime in order to to drop it. Uh, and it, so it can be voluntary or it can be as a result of the blue coats getting somebody and, and putting them. Yeah. Blue. Cool. But we'll get to that someday, maybe. Uh, 
You can no, just enjoy totally it. Just put RC. But not today. Let's just, put, let's just put RC in jail so I can take over. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Yeah, there's a and there's a mechanic for seeing how your prison sentence goes and if you get traumatized by it or what and it, there's it's a whole thing. Um, yeah, okay. it'll come up when it comes up. So, but what it means is um, on the street and among in the blue coat world, somebody somewhere has a file now. An investigator has started a file like, you know, killer gang in the, on the docks question mark and they have some rough ideas of who you might be. Yeah. Somebody somewhere has started a file, started an investigation. They're going to look on for it. Yeah. 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 Uh, on the murderer. Whatever. <laughs> you killed a bunch of people too. Uh, no. Yes, you did. Come on. No. Or Everyone saw it. you. We all saw it. Everyone saw it. You did it. Well, sure. <laughs> Take it's, it like, like it's like on the wire before they know who Marlo is. You know, it's like right. Yeah. It's right in that. Period. They're like starting to try to figure out what's going on. Yeah. All these people are just disappearing off the streets. We don't know why. Mm -hmm. We're cleaning up problems, man. We're getting rid of gang members. These yeah, are violent we people. We're like a debt <clears throat> consolidation company. We're just trying to get all the different gangs to go away, and just they only have to deal with one big gang, us. Yeah. And we'll <laughs> give them very right. reasonable interest rates. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, this—that's the premise of the game, right? Like. They, the blue coats are just a horrible gang too. They just have they just have the backing of the, the yeah, party and stuff. True. Um, yeah. Yeah. Who who watches the Watchmen? You know what I'm saying? Just <laughs> God. All right. That's right. Oh my God. Okay. So, uh, that's the your payoff and your heat. Um, I, I assume we got no coin from that job. I mean, we got coin from our vice stand, but I assume that we got no coin from the actual like killing of dudes. Right, that yeah. is right. Yes, that's, good. that's, that's good. So you just got the two, um, plus I think you already had two, maybe. Yeah. Uh, Hold on. I... So yeah, you had two already. So you're, you're full up with four now. Right. That's good. Something to spend. Yeah. All right. So that's that's all the business and and the entanglements. I've already I've already rolled those uh, just to save time on the screen tonight and but they'll come up as we go um sure they won't be a problem no they're fine they're totally fine uh okay so should we should we do uh oscar should we do your yeah uh ask? so i think i think oscar kind of uh pulls at least the uh, rc and Cantor together and uh yeah. has a sits down like the next day and says okay we need to have a talk about where we're going kind of as a business uh, because right now we have a bit of a golden opportunity. Currently, uh, the biggest gang that moves drugs in a big way is actually the Red Sashes. They're the ones that have the high ends uh, drug dens. They're the ones that have the ends with the top notches. And uh, because of the war in the district, uh, we need to kind of figure out where we're going to go. Because we can try and win the war in the district and become the power here or we can ally with somebody else. But regardless, we need to figure out if we're going after the Red Sashes to bury them or if we're going to build our power base while everybody else is warring. Look at this fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> who would have thought, huh? Well, we were I all actually partying. have plans for each of these avenues, but I need to know which way you guys yeah. are. <laughs> yeah, so fighting a war on three fronts against the Red Sashes, the Lampbacks, and the Crows. I mean, we could take them. Like, R.C., RC like, stretches, because now, two days after this fight and a couple injuries, now she's, like, feeling it. Now she's, like, tight. And she's like, we could take them, sure, but at what cost? Seems silly to fight three gangs when we can let them kill each other for, for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Just we got to pick the – we got to pick the right one, <laughs> right? Because – Cantor and RC are on the same side. We should throw a parade or something. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever yeah. one we pick will become the right one. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Who do we? Who do we make the right one? Yeah. Plus, here's the situation, right? We got to pick somebody we can back now and fuck over later when it's time to get rid of them. So, well, the only person we haven't fucked already is is Bazo. And Bajo. Yeah. Bajo. Bazo. Bajo. <laughs> Pronunciation is important, particularly when you're summoning demons. Continue. Fair. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Yeah, we'll we'll do, we'll cover the crime shit. You cover grammar lessons. So, 
<laughs> Malera is never, ever going to want to be our friends. She might be scared of us, though. Scared enough that she doesn't tack back while we work with Bajo. Bajo. Better? <laughs> He's the only one that we have something to offer, which is the elimination of his rival. Because Lissa yeah. doesn't want the, the red sashes to go away. She likes the she likes those two being at each other's throats. As far as I'm concerned, I think Lamp Blacks are the number one gang. Now, of course, they're going to want a piece, though. They're not going to they're not going to back our play if we just say we're going to take over red sash territory. They're going to want to split it with us, or probably they're going to want to take it all. So we're going to have to give them. Have, they don't have the power to fight us over the red sashes. What we can do is give them a shot at the crows, a clean shot where they don't have to fight the red sashes on the way. And if they know that we have the sashes covered and we're going to get them out of the way, it's going to give them enough leverage to maybe make a real hit. And quite yeah. frankly, if they get crushed, well, the crows are going to be weak, then we can go after them too. Yeah, you don't yeah. think Baja's got enough personally against Malera that he isn't going to want to see her dead himself? I think that he is a much better businessman than you give him credit for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, we have in favor of our uh, enterprises, let's say, uh, the Lamplacks, to a degree already, uh, Dimmer Sisters are all up in our shit. Yeah. They're just not, they're just not, they just don't matter in this district. Well, but... sure, but they can help us, right? Yeah. When the time comes to strike against Malera, if you think that their sorceries will not prove critical to victory... I mean, I want your fucking sorceries to prove critical to victory, man. I don't want to rely on some people I don't know. We should bring every gun we have. Yeah, So I, I intend I have... to. I go everywhere with every gun I have. That's the point. Those are all his guns. These are all my guns. Check them out. I got the big one. I got these little small ones over here. I got that big one over there by the coat rack. I'm ready. Uh, can I ask you an out-of-character question, Adam? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you name your guns? Um... Maybe, but I wouldn't tell anybody about it. Okay, cool. I don't know uh, if we I, just like picked up that like the one on your right hip is why no no or whatever. No, no, no. Yeah, no. They're all called Charlene. Um, no. Um, yeah, I think like. Yeah, I think we should. I mean, I've played. I played this game before. I know how it goes. We just turn Austria. We turn the Austro-Hungarians against Russia, and then you know. So exactly. Yeah. So the I have sisters, a suggestion. The Dimmer Sisters don't care about the um, the turf here, right? Like they they're out their shit's elsewhere right now. They're uh, elsewhere, but everybody cares about all the turf because anytime you change something, you disrupt the balance. They're gonna care. And just just to j jump in rules wise, when you get to the plus and minus three um, status, that means they'll do things that aren't in their best interests to either help or hurt you. It doesn't have to be purely like. A, an even trade they'll actually do stuff just because they're your friends um so right or or they'll try to hurt you if they're your enemies even if it fucks them over uh, which is actually yeah. kind of kind of good in both directions right like if we can lure the red sashes into doing something stupid and then we can get our friends to help us get in on i think they, they did just do something stupid I I mean, like more more like stupid stuff wrecked windows above us yeah 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 word all right. In which case, I have a I have a suggestion. Um, I'm gonna speak out of character for a brief second, and then I'm gonna jump back into character. Out of character, I know that we don't have enough hold and reputation to take out the red sashes and grab level two. Mm -hmm. So yeah. going at them head on, out of character. This is not the time. We should do it right. when we have twelve hold, right? Yeah. So in character, uh, what Oscar is going to say is um, the people that are responsible for getting us some of these pigments and goods. Um, in particular, are looking for somebody to be their patron. And I think that this might be the time to either consolidate them or to bring them on board. Uh, specifically, as the Hawkers, we have a connection with Marlowe, who's a gang boss, and he's the leader of the Foghounds, who are smugglers. And they can get us stuff from other cities and take our stuff to other cities and also do leg running in, in between the city. So what I'm suggesting is that, RC, you should go and... Uh, like. You should like frontline this, but we should go and talk to them and try and get them basically on board with the plan as kind of like a crew that we can now take under our umbrella. All right. I'm going to counter this by saying, why try to get money from so far away when there's bankroll sitting up in a white crown, just like 
waiting to be taken when there's just like largesse just just hanging around i have a second I'm, plan for that and the okay. second plan goes like this your so Kitcher, you've been talking about your ship captain girlfriend a whole bunch haven't you yeah fantastic uh, it just so happens that ship captains are basically hired by the nobility to procure the Leviathan blood, which each of the nobles has license on and so on and so forth, which means that they mingle with the right people. And because she's on land and not leaving for a little while, there's no doubt that she's going to get invited to a party. So I have a job for you, and that is to convince her to get a fucking tattoo. And I will provide some badass tattoos so that we create essentially a fad so that we can get... Um, higher class clientele which is going to make more money rolling in man i don't i don't know dude those tattoos are some creepy shit i kind of like her not possessed by demons i mean i know that's your jam and shit but i would like her to stay like how she's at now if you know what i mean and not like awkwardly gesture i awkwardly gesture at you i'm like <laughs> So, so for a split God, second, it's so hard not to like. Kendra's gross, but I just keep thinking really gross things to say and keeping them to myself. Uh, so I think I think Oscar actually gets real quiet and says, "Canter, this is about business. Weren't you, what did you say about making money? Where does love have place in that?" Oh, uh, dog! I didn't say I love her. I just said, you know, I don't want to have intimate relations with somebody who's got spirits all up. There's only room inside of her for two people: her and me. And I don't need you yeah. complicating that shit with your magic. Like, if you want to fucking tattoo anybody, I, like, gesture at my myself. I'm like, fucking start here, baby. Yeah, okay. you're not our client. And, again, when did you start getting sentimental? Like you said, uh, Leviathan Hunter captains are a dime a dozen, right? And RC. I'm like, yeah, well, why, why do we got to go outside? We got one already if you want to. And I gesture at you. I'm like, yeah, sure. Except for I'm <laughs> wanted. You know what? I'm I'm game. I think we can. Uh, I think we can make money locally and 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 abroad. But there's 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 a whole lot of cash sitting in Lord Keel's uh, uh, sitting in Lord Keel's coffers yeah. that I'm partial to liberating him of. Yeah, yeah, I'm into that. I so, uh, so here's a question for you, RC. Um, do you know why Lord Kill is coming after you? Because my understanding is that you made a pass at being ship captain and failed. And being out of his hair and out of his family actually is better for him. Why is he causing trouble now? Because it's a black mark on the Kiel family that they let some nobody like me marry into the family, and now I'm at large. They want to close the books on Miss R.C. Keel and write me off like I never existed. And fuck them and fuck, and fuck Papa-in-law for trying to screw over Julian and my kids uh, who are going to get their goddamn inheritance if I have to bleed it out of Lord Keel myself. That we was getting also, sentimental. We will also take our cut, of course. I think you might not be understanding the full context of the situation. Uh, we, are, we are potentially going to war against the nobleman who has pretty powerful resources. I say eyeballing exactly what the level of nobles are on the, on the chart here. Uh, but we don't really understand the full breadth of the lines. Like when Malara, when Malara comes at us, we know why she's coming at us, we know what she brings to bear, and we know what uh, theaters the fight is going to be in. So it sounds to me it sounds to me like we got two things we got to do. We just got to decide what order in which to do them, right? Like whoever's the, the like in softest target, we just go after them first and use the, the fallout mm -hmm. from that to take out the other one. So do we deal with, you know, money bags first? Or do we deal with our problem on the streets? I would like to not give the Red Sashes a chance to get back up on us. Like, they're down now. I say we start kicking. Right? Yeah. We can do both. Um, I have... We can probably just, or at least I can, just go and talk to Lord Keel. Yeah, I mean, that's like, what I want to talk to you about. Talk, talk to him, or like... T 
talk to him, talk to him with your ghost. Put yeah, I mean, we got to be specific about this shit. Is there a difference? I mean, maybe not for you, man. What I'm saying is I'm noble. He's noble. I actually have the right to call on him if I want to. And I think that seeing our opponent and looking him in the eye and asking him some hard questions and understanding exactly what the playing field is, is probably going to be more beneficial to us than coming up with some plot that's going to put bullets in him is definitely going to put us on some crazy wanted list and not understanding the consequences or the causes of why we're going after does him. He, does he know anything about I'm, I'm addressing our, uh, RC in this situation like... Does this guy know anything about your new associates, by which I mean myself and Weird Boy over here? No, I've seen the wanted posters of me. They're old. They're back from when I was uh, on the ships. I mean, he might have heard some word, but he's not trying to get rid of R.C. Keel, fucking drug dealer. He doesn't give a shit about that. He cares about his family's parents, and that's all in the past. Now, yeah, we can he, still make things worse, but... I'm really, really good at making things worse. Yeah, yeah. No no, no arguing here. <laughs> the thing is that the gun will always be a solution on the table, but we need to know when to pull the trigger on this one because this target is not uh, some small menial servant of Malara. Okay, so so kills our long-term plan and hit hurt and stashes is our short-term. I like this. We're gonna we're gonna work on we're gonna get info about about Keel. I've got connections even if they don't want to see me. I know people. Oscar, you and I can work together. You can be you can be the front, and I can tell you who's who. That's perfect. What. And we'll scope that out. And in the meantime, I think we need to talk to Bajo and tell him that we're his we're that we're on his side and and ask him to work with us to hurt the, the red sashes. So at least we're not getting caught in the crossfire. So he knows that we're hitting them. So he has this feeling that we are showing appropriate respect to him and he can focus on the crows. Yeah. Seems like yeah. a canter job to me. Sure. I think we know what we're doing. And down times. Yeah, seriously. Okay, kick the sashes while they're down, and plan for Lord Keel's uh, dark future. Yeah, yeah, I'm super into the part where we fucking all roll up in his house, bandanas on, shit, fucking make this guy ante up. But for now, we play cool. Yeah. Now we play cool. Okay, cool. Um. Let's do some downtime. Okay. And I think, uh, well, whoever wants to go first, uh, it's fine with me. Um, I'll do one. I got a quick one. Cool. I'm gonna be some. I'm gonna do some vicing. Um, yeah. I think this probably took place over the last couple of days, uh, but it could continue during this. This. I mean, this is like the day after, or two days after. So. Um, you know, like this morning when, when RC peeled herself out of, uh, out of bed, Marlene was, was in there at, at the Skrillock Manor, like, mm -hmm. uh, oh, was yeah. that not a first? Uh, I think so. I think it was like, like there was a separation of business and pleasure and that just got forgotten after that fight. Yeah. Cause it seemed like you were going to her place mm -hmm. or, yeah. yeah. Uh, and now like. You're all you're wounded and you're laid up in bed, and so she like, sort of, sneaks kind of up into the rich part of town and uh, yeah slips right. out. Or does she Dark have to night. like? We got. Just, I mean, I, I guess it's up to me what Marlene is like. Maybe I don't think she cares about that actually. I, I think oh, she might. She, she's wearing her like tattered little <laughs> short jacket and her yeah. cap pulled down, and she's got a big shiner from the fights, and just kind of like strolls. Uh, right. the avenue, like, you know, and, right. and the powers, normal, like, nobility are like, why is there this weird, like, buff fighter chick walking yeah. around in the neighborhood? I think she's, like, standing in, like, our kitchen in, this, in her skivvies, like, getting, helping herself to the larder. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So I'm going to roll myself some vice. Um, yeah, so 
Um, we haven't done this version, I don't think, yet. No, uh, but I read it. I think I get it. I want to explain yeah, it to so you. You roll your lowest attribute because your vice is, is rooted in your the weak part of your character. Yeah. Uh, and then you clear stress equal to your high roll. Uh, right. Would Sean get plus one die for utilizing uh, an ally person from their sheet? Yes, that is an excellent point, Strash. Uh, when friends and contacts are involved in downtime, you get a bonus die. So, oh, awesome. Marlene cool. is is not just your lover. She's a bonus die, too. Nice. I'm digging it. So, <laughs> my lowest, uh, so the audience might not see if they're looking at the... Uh, at the stat, I, at the sheet, I went ahead and moved a dot out of survey into prowl because we we've been like switching character sheets around quite a bit, and uh, so now my lowest attribute is two. They're all two, uh, so I'm rolling three d six. No, I'm trying to roll three d six. You and your attributes. My attributes. All right. Uh, I didn't see it pop up, but it told me I got a five. No, yeah, I see it. You got a two. You got a two, a two, and a one. Never mind. Yeah. Nicole's like nice. Cleared a whopping two stress with that one. Cool. <laughs> two stress recovered. Okay, down to five. So you may uh, spend another uh, downtime action on vice again if you want to, and just um, continue yeah. the bender. Yeah, get some get some snacks out of the larder and then uh, go back to bed with with, with Marlene. Uh, I might, but let's just rotate around. Unless we want to do all yeah. of them. Unless we want to hit them all out. Nice. Okay, I'm just trying to find um, Strash Hugo. I'm trying to find how stressed I am. Uh, I'm gonna do something real simple. Uh, there's gonna be a scene where I'm actually interacting with Quillen who is both my witch friend and the alchemist that helps us make all of our crazy stuff. And uh, what I'm going to do is a recovery action. Um, I have no level one stress, but I have two level twos. And uh, I don't know how long one of them is lasting because I got like rung because uh, something blasted past my head. But I know that I have a burnt left hand or blasted left hand. Sorry, that's the name of my album. Uh, so... Uh, so she, I'm probably chatting with her. Uh, I ask her for help, and she's probably using some oils to extinguish sort of like the the, the fire that's still burning in you know uh, a tune site um, in the ghost lands. Uh, and so yeah, she's probably just like setting up bandages and uh, fixing up my hands. Uh, yeah. So you 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 go to Quellen's place for this, I assume. Um, she has her her little. Yep. Weird, uh, which is a uh, um, apartment. Uh, it's it's in. Uh, what, what oh, yes, those are those are those are in all the fairy tales. And then Hansel and Gretel wander into the witch's weird apartment. <laughs> weird apartment. <laughs> is it made of gingerbread? And IKEA furniture. Yeah, yeah totally. It's, so it's probably enough. like two floors in some like building that was condemned or something. Who knows? Yeah, it is. It's two floors. She cut. She's cut a hole in the ceiling, and she has a tree that grows up into the second, uh, into the second floor, and like weird buds appear on it. And she's always like clipping things off of it and smelling them and putting them in. She has this like huge apothecary drawers on the wall that she puts everything in. Dank. Yeah. So you have yeah you have your blasted hand and you have like a concussion kind of like your ears are still kind of ringing and um, tinnitus e. Bad headache. So you wanted to deal with the, the hand? Uh, actually, we've never done a recovery action. So yeah. uh, I'm seeking treatment for what ails me, however that works. Right. So there, it's kind of two phases. There's getting treatment so you can start to heal uh, pr properly. And then if you get the treatment successfully, then you start a clock and you heal it over time and it eventually so goes if, away. So if RC, if RC got hurt uh, trying to hunt leviathans, would it be treatment for what whales her <laughs> sorry nice. i'll go i'm just gonna mute myself keep playing your games <laughs> john's dead oh, <laughs> I, I, I love puns just keep sorry, going john. sorry everybody sorry i have to pretend like i'm offended but i i like him too yeah um <laughs> nice so yeah so uh the gm sets like the how long it takes to heal something um how big that clock is so the uh, concussion will be a four piece, and the burned hand will be eight. 
Or no, sorry, it's it's a level two burn, right? Yeah, they're both level two. Okay, uh, let's say the concussion's pretty simple. So yeah, that'll stay four and the burn will be six. But the first thing you're doing, right, you're, you're getting treatment. That's the first the first thing. Yep. Um, so, uh, and then what happens if I take another recovery action and those clocks will start filling? So that, they, they become long-term projects. Um, so you you just work a long-term project to, to deal with those. Either you roll, you're rolling it or uh, somebody who's working on it rolls yeah. it. <laughs> um, but with the treatment, uh, she you're in a position actually to get her to treat both of your problems. She can like make you a tea to help with your head uh, while she gets some salve out and like bandages your hand and stuff. So I think we can roll like the treatment phase into one recovery action here because it makes sense that cool. they're, you know, simple wounds for a witch chemist like her to deal with. <clears throat> um, I don't think the treatments are risky here. Uh, no, yeah, nothing. I mean, the way you got the burn was magical and strange, but it's it is just a burn at the end of the day. Um, so I don't think we need to roll for that. Um, so yeah, so that by by the end of the of the afternoon, um, she set you up to to heal. She tells you, you know, when to change your the bandage and uh, gives you a little uh, sachet of of tea that she's made to to carry home with you to help with the head. Uh, and tells you, uh, uh, sorry, I got distracted. Uh, <laughs> tells you to come back if anything funny happens or if there's any weirdness. Uh, but sure, seeing go. things. Oh, wait, that's totally normal. Uh, so I have, uh, my question is, can I then do a long-term project action to just rest up and take care of myself? Yep. Yep. Uh, I mean, I can. Uh, I will visit her. I will get my bandages changed. Uh, we'll probably have some discussions on what we could add. You know, I've been thinking about this yellow and red ink, and this is how we can do it, and so on. Uh, totally. So, uh, yeah, you, you yeah. can immediately spend your next downtime action to like heal. Uh, that's totally fine. Um, cool. Uh, Mechanics so, question, John. Uh, did yeah. clocks start with one tick on them? So, like, when you start a clock, does it automatically have a tick? Usually we don't see clocks until they have a tick on them, but in this case, it seems like you might just start the clock and then you start filling it up with through recovery. Yeah, it puts zeros. Right. Yeah, they, these start with zero. Um, the maybe that could be consistent. Uh, like with complication clocks, they usually start with a tick because something just happened. Right, yeah, that's uh, the the prompt to start the clock. But you can you can ideate a clock first, right? You can be like you can you can because I like, think that think happened with Oscar, right? Where you were like, I want to do a thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you 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 tick it when the thing starts, and that may be when you create the clock, or you may create the clock first. So yeah, cool. Yeah, sure. A little bit of a great. All right. Idea. So, um, what what do I roll if she's uh, working on this treatment for me? Uh, quality as a as a witch because she's your doctor um, unless uh, you have some other thought there and and no. you do get a bonus die um, on top of that because uh, she's um, she is cool. a friend so or I will do exactly that I will roll my two d six and then I have a question is that applied to both or do I choose which clock that goes to uh, normally it would apply to one. Um, I'm okay with it counting for both in this case. The the concussion is such a such a minor problem that um, that's that's why I'm asking because it doesn't feel like I need special treatments for it. Uh, like I don't think so. like so. like if you had different types of injuries or something that needed separate treatments, then they'd be separate. But eh, I think they can just all be rolled together in this case. The, it's whatever fictionally makes sense. So um, we can call Word. it that. So you got a six, cool. so you're going to, oh, uh, that's three, three ticks on your clocks. Can okay. I spend a coin to buy some rare herbs to help bump that up to four so that one clock is gone, the other one's half done? Yep. I will do that. I will spend a, I will spend a coin from my personal reserve. Cool. Mm, hey. Oscar Scarlock's personal reserve. It sounds like a delicious <laughs> beer. It's, uh... 
It's a whiskey aged as old as he is. Oh, I thought it was a magical jam. Is this what it's 12? Oh, preserves, I see. Yes. Yeah. Uh, nice. So, Oscar, during the coming and going over the next couple days uh, to Quellen's place to get to get treated, um, you catch sight of a a guy in the Six Towers area that should not be there, out of out of place like Marlene, um, who uh, you you see him from behind. He's he's meandering in the block just south of of the Skirlock Manor. And sort of does this weird like you you come around the corner as you're going up the hill to the house, and he keeps walking towards you, and then just kind of for no reason turns around and like briskly starts walking in the other direction, but you get a glimpse of his face, and it's his, his name is Milos. Um, he is uh, he works with Flint, the spirit trafficker. Of course, um, he does. Yeah, and he, he really has no business being around in this area at all. Uh, but he he like sees that you see him and just like doop, like turns just does and, like, that really subtle like nope yeah yeah <laughs> not smooth at all like in in six towers there aren't like sh- all kinds of street markets and people everywhere and stuff it's more of a like nice wide avenues and it's all you know carriages trundle to and fro so he's kind of out of place he has nowhere really to hide so he just goes yeah and <laughs> Just be walking in. Awesome. Uh, cool. Uh, can I follow? Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna do my creepy little thing and uh, just try and prowl behind him because I don't think we stalk anymore, right? Uh, right. Yes. Uh, pr- prowling would be the thing to do if you want to stay out of sight. Um, How is your prowling? Oh, you got a dot. You got prowl dot. I do. I do. So I think I think I'm just gonna roll it and see what happens. Yeah, go for it. Uh, so I, I should have told you your position. Uh, it's 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 sitting in the midst difficult. You should uh, not be very proud of that result. <laughs> That's a very uh, bad sometimes roll. Sometimes you roll and sometimes it comes crappy. So that one popped up. Uh, do you want a devil's bargain or push yourself, or do you want to take your take your miss? No, I'm, I'm okay. I think that, that if I get into a jam, that's where I'll push. I think for right now, um, I'm essentially on his tail when I'm going to get into something. So no let's see what happens. Yeah. I mean, uh, if he spots me, it's okay. He totally spots you. Yeah. Um, and, uh, like, realizes being he's being followed. So he uh, stops and hails a, hails a cab. Um, and... Jumps in and like pfft, heads off the other way. God damn it! That's all right. I'll let it go for now. Uh, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll tango you don't, have, you don't have some like pit fiend driven rickshaw you can jump into. <laughs> uh, no, to the I could mobile. A ghost on. <laughs> I could I could take a ghost on him, but I think for right now, uh, the point has been made. The like you know, I know that you're here. I'll be looking for you, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we'll keep an eye yeah, on hunt, hunt, hunting him down w- would be a thing uh, somebody could do if you wanted to to do that. Uh, but he, he he gets away in the moment. Okay, so John. Uh, the way you took yeah. that is just uh, Oscar lost the opportunity for action. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Not to... Yeah, the opportunity to to prowlingly pursue him was lost, and he slipped slipped away. Uh, yeah, so what that means mechanically, just for people watching at home, like he, when when you lose the opportunity for something, it means through your current uh, like means. So uh, Strash could counter and say, "No, I still I still want to track him down, but I'm I'm gonna do it in a different way now." Yep. The way he was trying like gets gets blocked, but doing the thing at all isn't blocked. You just have to change your method. And yeah. I could have gone desperate, and I could have pushed it, but I I. I have the feeling that we don't know exactly what sort of trouble they're stirring up yet. Uh, if they get closer and if they start like actually being around Skirlock Manor, then the game's going to change. Then I'm just going to tell Cantor, Cantor might shoot a fool. Yeah, do we know party. anything? Do we know anything about these? This guy. So uh, actually, you know what? Oscar probably like does tell you uh, while he's in the kitchen making a sandwich with the special preserves. 
uh, <laughs> Uh, he probably actually mentions this to Cantor, and he says that uh, he'll fill you guys in. This is not a secret. Flint is a spirit trafficker, and essentially he did business where he was like 50% legit and 50%, you know, showy, charlatan -y type stuff. Like, um, yeah. And uh, Oscar kind of has been sort of stealing his clientele and sort of showing him up. And so, like, the better we do, the more, like, frustrated and jealous he is. Oh, good. So he might be trying to, like... I, I don't know. Start something. We're so, not sure 100% what yet, but it's something I keep an eye out on. Sure. All right. Yeah. I mean, all, all I'm hearing is like that you have a personal problem you need to attend to. If it becomes it, if it becomes our problem, you can tell us again. Right now, it sounds like you have a problem. You are correct. That's, that's Cantor's response to anything. It's like the house is burning down. He's like, hey, it's not my house. I mean, yeah, it's your exactly. House. No, totally. It sounds problem. like you're telling me about a problem that doesn't involve me. So I don't yeah. see why I got to care about your house being on fire. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Very true. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, if beca if it becomes Cantor's problem, then you know right, then, then right. he'll care. Yeah. Then then he'll. Then you can tell me about <laughs> it. Shit. I'll help you. Right, right, okay. Uh, yeah, and otherwise your recovery uh, goes well. Your headaches disappear, and your hand is on the mend. It'll take a few weeks to fully heal, but you're you're gonna be okay. Yeah, I'll. Uh, uh, Cantor, you ready for your downtimes? Because I I yeah, might yeah. take some extra ones by spending coin later. Sure. Yeah, I got um, some, I got some extra. I've got one more for free, and I'll probably take a third. Uh, I uh, I want to deal with my um, my thing, my um, stress. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Can we figure out how much stress you had. I feel like you had a lot. Yeah, I had quite a bit. Because I know you rolled once where you may have gotten to trauma, and you you like rolled well. Mm -hmm. So it was like six-ish, maybe, or I, I forget exactly where you were. Yeah. I think you may have been um, even closer because I'm pretty sure we were both pushing on that last roll over the gang, and I think we were both like, ah, I can. J at least I was. I can just barely push. I, I was at five. Yeah, I think I. I think I'm at five now. Yeah. You're at five now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that's what. Yeah, I remember back, you both pushing. Going back and looking, yeah. I, I think I'm at five. So okay. the process for that is I'm gonna go and. Buy some fancy new clothes. Yeah, so you have your vice purveyor on the sheet now, which is Dundridge and Sons. Cantor, <laughs> uh, you should look for a fine coat as if you were going to a fancy party. Dog, I'm always going to fancy parties. What are you talking about? As if. As Fancier. if my ass. I'm going to buy the fanciest coat you've ever Fancier. seen. Fancier. <laughs> if you want to bankroll me for a fancier coat, sure. But I'm gonna take go a and coin. buy. Take a coin from the bank. I'm not kidding. All right, man. You, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at RC and be like, he said, fucking said I could do it. He said I could. I, you heard him. You heard Since him. what? Whatever. All, all of a sudden, what Oscar says goes. Hey, yeah. Oscar said it. Oscar so said you know, it. You know, it's Oscar two said against. It. I went. I'm just going along with this plan to buy me a nice coat. Yeah. Right. I'm it's sure. Like, it's, it's like, hey, man, you should just take some money out of my wallet and go buy some drugs and do them. I bet that'd be fun for you. And I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, doing it. So, uh, yeah, I go to Dundridge and Sons, and I get my Dundridge on. Buy one of the Sons. Yeah. So if you have if you have an extra coin to drop, they'll uh, they'll actually like take your measurements and uh, you know block block out a muslin coat for you and like talk to Sir about what Sir prefers in a collar and all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Sir yeah. has many very specific preferences about Sir's collar. <laughs> Thank you very much. How many collars would you like on That's your right. coat? Nested collars. We're doing this feathered collars thing where they just go back like off. No. I don't know. Um, yeah. uh, there's white hot, sum wet hot summer. The, 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 the Netflix show that they made that was supposed to be the prequel, but it's 10 years later. Mm -hmm. There is yeah. like some guy, there's some preppy guy who has like a, a sweater with like like three sweaters. He's got like all the yeah. colors. My coat, my coat is like the equivalent of like a scooter from the '60s. It's just like blistering with accoutrement. Um, no, I, I think I think that Cantor like Cantor's kind of a, a like lowbrow dude for the most part, but actually kind of has an eye for like what's fashionable because he obsesses over it. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, 
that's actually like a reasonable request to like get something that makes me look like I'm I'm fancier than I actually am because that's what he's doing. He's hiding right behind his nice. his his coats. Um, totally. So okay, they, so, they, they do have like they have all the current season um, some Aruvian silks for lining, and it's it, fashionable now to have to have a real peaked. Uh, uh, st- kind of stiff collar that that drops down across. Oh uh, yeah, I love that shit. And Dundridge is uh, he's old. He's especially old for for a, a Duskwall person. He's probably like ninety or something. Um, and he's got his his actual sons work there with him. But he's seen everything and is has that kind of like unflappable uh, uh, butler kind of Alfred kind of uh, yeah, yeah, demeanor yeah. where. Like you, you're wearing your pistols like, like under your vest or whatever. And yeah. when he takes your measurements, uh, he just casually is like, you know, does sir normally carry a brain <laughs> or, or more? Is this is this the standard size? And he's like taking the measurement with your gun so the coat will look right. like. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it just doesn't it doesn't phase him at all. He's not he's not like ooh a ruffian. You know, he just doesn't care at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, awesome. he's got to know whether to cut it. You know, to fit all the guns you've got on underneath it. That's, mm-hmm. that's I, I get it. I get my fucking waistcoat cut aspirationally. I'm like, yeah, but I'm gonna get more guns. So like, make sure there's some <laughs> I got room to grow room yeah. in there for my new guns when I get them. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he would say the same thing as people mm, say yes, before the wedding. <laughs> Let me just measure you as you are right now. <laughs> uh, you make me come back, buy another waistcoat. That's cool. That's cool. That is, that's the racket, right? They get that's you. Racket, that's yeah. how they get you. They don't make space yeah. for your guns. Um, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what do I what do I roll for this? I roll... So you're going to roll your lowest attribute. Which is, like, they're all the same. Uh, my lowest is okay. a one. Cool. Um... And then I heal that much. So I recover that much stress. Yes, you you recover that much stress. All right, I get two, so I'm down to three. Okay. And because you spent a coin on it, I think you either well, effectively, you could just roll again, or does the coin just bump up how much vice? Um, you recover? It's up I don't to think you. it does. After the roll, you may increase the result level by one for each coin spent. Right. So, but in this case, advice, it's not super useful to do that. Like, go, doing it again is is what you want to do. Spend the coin on, which you can also use it. Yeah. Well, that. now I got to go to the freaking haberdashery and get myself a new hat to go with my new coat. Obviously. Yeah. So it's now, it, now it's up to you, Adam. If you want, like, you can just straight up spin that coin and like have a fine coat now, mm-hmm. uh, and just just be done with it there. Or if you want to, you can get a nice coat that like looks good and then do something else to sustain your oh, I see your thing. Um, so the coin could not be spent for the extra downtime action but just to actually purchase a nice coat yeah you could if you wanted it to count sure like, for so the thing. so we do the we do the thing where like you're like engaging in your vice doesn't necessarily actually get you anything but the recovery of stress like you couldn't be like my vice is magic swords and uh just oh, i rolled a six i guess i get a magic sword that's great and awesome that i can use all the time yeah i get it okay it's more like you yeah, go yeah. to the magic sword museum and you're just like one day troll <laughs> will be mine <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. Feel it. uh then yeah. yes i will because i assume that that our freaking puppet master over here has a plan that requires me to get a specifically fancy looking coat so i do that yes i do yeah yeah, so you can take it, record it as fine, and it'll. It basically means you are dressed and and uh, can operate as a tier two person with your coat. Like you, you pass as a higher quality of person. <laughs> In the- I love that. I love the idea. This is a thing that just like role playing games do, where they're like they take a thing that's kind of like implicit in real life and make it a mechanic. Where you're like, mm-hmm. yeah, you're a level two person now. You just you're you're a higher tier individual. Well, don't go that far, Adam. You just got a level two coat. Yeah, it makes me look like I'm a Looks bigger like deal cool. than I am. Yeah. yeah, you're really like level two when you're trying to show off the fancy coat, totally. right? It's my knockoff yeah. Prada purse. All right. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. Okay. Cool. Uh, so, do you want to also? Do you want to do vice again? Uh, as your as your second downtime. Right, because we get two. We get two each, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was looking good. at the other actions. Um, I got a long term long term project. 
I kind of want to make, and everybody, I keep it like such a huge secret. I don't tell anybody because they would make fun of me, and that's the worst thing to ever happen to Cantor. Um, I yeah. kind of want to work on, can I make Getting Married to What's-Her-Face my like long-term project? Holy shit. Yeah, because she's, she's so cool, and like, I was, I could... I can be a total goon, and she's still just like, oh, you're funny, and I'm like... I love that it's like, she's so cool, I love her, I want to marry her, what's her face? I can't remember her name, <laughs> lady, lady uh, I just remember my awesome girlfriend, I wrote it down, but I can't remember, what's her name? Someone else. Girl? Uh, Cap Captain Linnea is her name. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I am dying, well put, shot. <laughs> Uh, I yeah. love you. What's your face? I love you, hot cats and lady. You are the best. <laughs> Let's get married. Let's have babies. We can she, name them stuff I won't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go back to the ocean, girl. I'm recording an R&B album for you. Uh, okay, can I do that? Oh, can, I, can I make? So make yeah, you can. All right. Yeah. Um, and and you can work on it if you want, or I mean, you can start it and not work on it and do something else, no, or you can. I'm totally gonna do it. Um, what's my romancing skill? Um, so let's let's see what's what well, size of okay. clock should this be. So here's <laughs> here's the thing, right? Is that like part of it? Part of what made me think about this is that because we're hawkers, we all get plus one consort and sway, which with that extra dice makes consort and sway as good as my hunt. It's like my they become my, like one of my best attributes. So I'm like. I, I think Hawkers just gives us you, a dot point in either consort or sway. I okay. Add, yeah. I see. So yeah. it doesn't just give you the plus which, one. Okay. Yeah. Which I think we've already got. That that yeah. was like. Okay. Their, but it's their... okay. You can work on it long term. Even if you get one notch, it's one notch closer to me. Yeah. 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 Right. Even if you roll a one, you still progress on long term. Okay. Yeah. Project. Cool. All right. So There's how many? No way to really fail. How many pieces of this sweet pie do I have to get at before? It's wedding bells for Cantor. Man. Um, yeah, I, got, I feel like... I got you now, John. Not a, I think that's not an immediate uh, thing. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> I think you're right, too. I, uh, so maybe, maybe we can split it into two parts. All right. Uh, um, this is the wooing part. <laughs> The next one is the marriage part. I mean, get married doesn't require yeah. you have to like do a bunch of shit. You just go to the courthouse and you're like, oh. "Yo, dog." Fuck oh, yeah, we're going to <laughs> I think so. Have you Cantor, asked her I what think... she thinks about that? Here's your here's, she's, here's, here's she's I, gangster like me. She's just tell me like, what you think about this. Tell me what you think about this, Adam. Right. So step one, uh, let's call it like. like let's call it a four part because I feel like this is pretty achievable. Okay. Um, be be exclusive. Get like be exclusive with Linnea. So because okay. like right now, like she does whatever she wants and is with whoever she wants, and she's with you when she wants to, and whatever. It's all fun. It's all fun and games to her. Um, so maybe you got to work on like, hey, like we should be a couple. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, me and me and me and Big L. All right. Yeah, and then yeah, let's. That's that's, let's a, that's what I wrote eight, down. Yep. Do an eight clock as part two of. You know, tie the knot, get married. Uh, man, fucking get married is complicated as shit. She is way out of your world, uh, but she's really into you. So it like that's it's exactly it's like so romantical and shit. It's possible, but it's not something she would want. Like. If you just dropped it right now, oh, yeah. it would be too embarrassing for her to uh, like. I know, but you know I mean? right. wait. Well, part of making it a long time plan too is that by the time I get there, I can be like, "Yo, I'm a big deal now. Look at my fucking ball or coat." Let's go. <laughs> I got the hat to match. Yeah, you want to get up in this coat? Let's go, baby. Um, yeah, cool. All right, so that's my. That's okay, my plan. So, do you want to work on that? Uh, yeah. Or do you want to? Yeah, yeah. More no, totally. Okay. How, what do you do to start the exclusivity um, um, process? I probably just like spend more time like doing stuff with her, uh, rather than just be like, "Smell you later, baby, and peace out." I'm probably like, "Cool, here's a thing I'm gonna do. You want to hang out? You want to do this thing with me?" 
I, I ask her if she'd like some theater and chill. Um, <laughs> like we right, just instead of kind of instead of just being up. like see you whenever, it's more like right. yeah, see you next time, see you later. Um, You're gonna start having like actual dates. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah, that. Right, right, take What's uh? What does Cantor actually do? Propose for a date? What's your what's your man maneuver? Um. Man, I don't know. I, I guess the first step of the clock is figure out what the shit she likes to do so that I can suggest we do that. Yeah, nice. Okay. I get to know her, so <laughs> we probably just do the same thing, but it might be a change in the tenor of the conversation. It might be like, yeah, 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 like being more curious about her as a person and not just as like hot captain lady. Nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so yeah, you, uh, you you meet up where you usually do, I think, that like fancy whiskey bar you found that one night. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the fancy whiskey actually, bar that you scraped me off like, the bar of. Yeah. And you have a like an engaging conversation where you like ask about her and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. In, instead of just try to drop, yeah. drop parallels between our lives, talk about stuff, feelings and junk. I don't know. Make sure nobody yeah. around is anybody I know. Yeah, no, that's there's no danger. We like you. You found this like really fancy uh, whiskey bar you and Brogan that night, and no, no one you know would ever go there. It's yeah, yeah. It's, too, it's too fancy. You got to have a nice coat to get in there. That's yeah. right. I probably like flashing my fucking new shit when I go up in there. That's probably like immediately after because I'm feeling like pretty good about my new outfit, and I'm like, nice. I got something to show you. And she probably thinks it's gonna be something like romantic or whatever but i'm like it's my new coat it's so lovely. yeah because like she doesn't me? really notice like she's she's a leviathan hunter captain she's super rich and like it just doesn't occur to her that you have a new coat I know. but i, sh <laughs> I tell kendra is the kind of guy who'd be like no no but check it out mm -hmm. and it actually it's dangerous and sons it's like it is super nice yeah yeah, yeah. i probably yeah. do some awkward shit like like say things like like find ways to like prove that I was there and like that it's real. And I'm like, yeah, like, but that guy there though, right? Like he's man, that guy's stuffy as shit. And and like I really like the like brown paint they use on the walls because the walls are brown because I was in there. I I went to that place. You know, like like he's he's yeah. very uh very concerned with like being taken seriously. And I think that part of why he's so uh so into this uh this woman is because it's a challenge right because like normally people are dumb and they're just like believe whatever he says but she's actually like he's worried about her actually taking him seriously so yeah yeah and it's still riding right on that line where you you aren't actually like behaving the right way or yeah doing something but, well, it, but and the, i mean the, the great really charming like the great the great tragedy would be that if by trying to be more like the kind of person that he thinks that she would want she becomes less interested in him because he's not the same like dirt bag that she liked from before like but he, of course Cantor doesn't recognize any of this Cantor is just like I gotta figure this out I gotta like this is what you do when you like like somebody um okay cool should I roll my thing oh Cantor yeah roll your thing I think uh I got like I dimensions and shit back off man uh I think this is consorting with with uh, Linnea. Mm -hmm. Seems that way to me. Um, I, I like seeing the side of Cantor. It's yeah, good. point is you're not seeing it. Our RC will see stay it. The way. I know. No. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, okay, cool. Um, so can I? Is there any way to get any other dice for this? Probably not worth doing. Hey, I guess I'm going to take my time. I'll just roll the one die. Let's see. Remember, you can't fail. It can just go a little slow, which it sounds like, you know, three. as a relationship, that makes sense. I got a three. What does that a mean? Three, okay. That is one one tick in that your is, yeah. in your clock. Cool. Uh, so she um she like listens to you sort of put on this like trying to prove yourself thing for a little bit and and kind of smiles and uh, finds it cute uh, but then she you as you're like kind of pointing it pointing out the features or whatever yeah, yeah. Uh, it has this Aruvian silk lining and she's Aruvian she's from Aruv 
Yeah. And uh, oh I probably say Wait. something. I probably say something really like cheesy, like um, yeah, like I just wanted some Aruvia next to my skin all the time. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Because I know you're busy, girl. So <laughs> that's a, that totally makes her laugh, and um, she uh, she like she she like she's like mm, and like kind of gets in there and kisses you on, like un, un, under the collar on your neck, and mm -hmm. uh, and then sits back and she kind of gets this little bit of a wistful look on her face, and she tells a little story about when she was a little girl. Um, her family uh, are th their nobility in Aruvia and mm -hmm. um, about how she, um, her father took her one time to see the silk uh, harvest, the, the like silk moth um, uh, cool. enclosure that they have and stuff. And she just kind of gets lost in this story of, of when she was a little girl and, and how beautiful it was. and. It's this. It's this really like enthralling tale. This weird faraway land that you've never really heard about. Nice. And it's yeah. It's like this really. You get this little insight. Like she, she's always been in a place. She was a little kid of like knowing she was going to inherit something great later in life, and having to sort of grow up to be the person that deserved that, and being able like I don't know how much Cantor gets out of this exactly, but there's a little insight there that she doesn't have to be that person with you. She doesn't have to be right. the great captain or what she was, she was raised to be. She could just be a, like a regular. Girl, and I think, regular. yeah, I mean, I think that that might be the way that things like, if this works, the way things kind of end up going is that it's not so much that like she can stop slumming it with Cantor and Cantor can stop trying so fucking hard and they meet somewhere in the middle where neither of them have to be like, on quite so much because I think that's something they have in common, right? Like she's gonna be tough sea captain, and I gotta be like, you know, young thug, and hopefully, Gangsta. yeah, and hopefully we can we can both find some like legitimacy as human beings in the middle someplace. Yeah, yeah, okay. taking taking the first step. Word. Nice, nice. Cool. Um, do we do we want to take a do we want to take a quick break?